the show. Thank you for uh, watching the show. Thank you for joining us at the show here in Hollywood. We're still wet. Things are, you know, the rain finally let up today, but it's coming back and it's cold. It snowed again today. There were snow flurries in Santa Monica, which is so crazy for us. And it rained a lot last night. Last night, I was uh, dragging the garbage cans out of the street. You know, it's like... Uh, the rain is, I felt like one of the soldiers in All Quiet on the Western Front. I was a, really a heroic act. Uh, it was harrowing, so I said to my wife, you know, Women's History Month starts tomorrow. I think it would be a cool thing. I think it would be a great message for our daughter and for equality if you drag the garbage cans out. Oh, uh, well, that's, yeah, that's... And then she showed me one of her fingers, and... Um, Women's History Month started as Women's History Week back in 1982, and then somebody thought, you know, hey, women should probably get more time than sharks on the Discovery Channel. <laughs> so they made it a month. It's an opportunity to look back at the history of women's rights, especially this year when so many of women's rights are history. And um, <laughs> while we're all aware that February is the shortest month, it was very hard this morning. In fact, it was damn near impossible for our newscasters around the country to believe it's March. Good morning to you. It is the beginning of March. Yes, can you believe it? Uh, no. March. Can you believe it? No. <laughs> March. I know. Can you believe it? March. Can you believe it? March. Can you believe that? Mm -hmm. March. Can you believe that? March. Can you believe it? March. Can you believe it? March. Manny, can you believe that? God bless. Can you believe it? We're already in March. Already in March. March already. Can you believe it's here already? It is hard to believe. Hard to believe it's March. Hard to believe this is March. Hard to believe that it's March 1st. March 1st. Can you believe it? March 1st. Oh, can you believe it? No. March 1st. Can you believe it? No. March 1st already. Can you believe it? March 1st. Can you believe it? March the 1st. Can you believe it? March 1st. Can you believe it? March 1st. Wow. Can we just let that sink in for a second? Okay, Jimmy Kimmel. And uh, can you believe it? <laughs> All right. Well, we're starting to make an impact. It's very inroads being made, but it's hard to believe they're still doing this. In Washington, D.C., uh, the annual gathering of the Magalos has begun. Today, they uh, started CPAC. CPAC stands for Clowns Periodically Assembling in Convention Centers. It's a chance for the far right to get together and share crazy thoughts. It started, uh, they started it with the traditional 21 assault rifle salute and the Pledge of Allegiance to Donald Trump. And then they got going with, they've got some great panels lined up this year. These are not real. We didn't make these up. These are jo not joke. People pay to go see... Uh, panels like No Chinese Balloons Above Tennessee, <laughs> Sacking the Woke Playbook, Parents with Pitchforks. I saw Parents with Pitchforks at Coachella last year. Really good band. There. <laughs> the Biden Crime Family. And uh, this is what I would actually go to. My speech from my, Mike Lindell, the My Pillow Man. He's, I guess his rabies test came back negative and he's able to speak at this event. And he's not the only star. You've also got the Honorable Matt Gates, Congressman from Florida, the Honorable Tulsi Gabbard, former Congresswoman, a Lieutenant Colonel, host of the Tulsi Gabbard Show, Mr. Donald Trump Jr., Executive Vice President of the Trump Organization, host of the Triggered with Don Jr. podcast, and, um, <laughs> and Carrie Lake, who, uh, I guess that's her resume. I don't know. Been, <laughs> I guess former local newscaster who lost didn't look good on the flyer. When you buy a ticket, a, a general ticket costs $295. And when you buy it, this is real. You have to promise you won't hold them liable if you get COVID. This is, <laughs> this is the same group of publicans who say COVID is a joke. Make you sign a waiver so they're not responsible if you die from that joke. Perfect. <laughs> Mike Pence will not be in attendance at CPAC. The last time, you know, last time a big group of these MAGA monkeys got together, they tried to hang them, so he opted out. <laughs> The conference is being held at the Gaylord Harbor National Resort and Convention Center, which is another reason Mike Pence won't come. <laughs> Donald Trump is the headliner, which means Ron DeSantis won't come either. This bad mojo between Trump and DeSantis. This, this is going to be a lot of fun. Even though he hasn't officially entered the race, Trump has been trying out nicknames for DeSantis, which is a subject he weighed in on with his pal slash Just For Men customer, Sebastian Gorka. <laughs> You made quite a bit of news on Truth Social and uh, on your recent uh, rallies with your new nickname uh, for the governor of Florida, Ron DeSanctimonious. Uh, Mr. G, th th somebody else has come up with a, a, another nickname. What, what is the nickname you have for us, Jeff? It's got to be Ron Establishment. Mr. President, Ron Establishment. Um, what do you think of that? 
That's not bad. I've, I've heard worse. You know, they came out with lots of different names. Meatball. I didn't like that one too much. <laughs> he didn't like that one. He came up with that one. He didn't like it too much. And by the way, doesn't Donald Trump have FaceTime? Why is every interview with him, him giving a mad face while we listen to him on the phone? <laughs> We got some new intel on what went on uh, at the FBI in the weeks leading up to the search and seizure at Mar-a-Lago. Some FBI agents were reluctant to search the president's residence because they didn't like the optics and they were scared they might walk in on Trump pleasuring himself to the Sean Hannity show. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Mr. President, we're not with the military. And while we continue to wait for one of these many investigations to result in something, weren't they about to hand out indictments in Georgia like two weeks ago? If they do finally lock Trump up, there's a whole minor league team of nitwits ready to step in and take over, including Marja Lago, Marjorie Taylor Greene, who is still whining about being heckled at a restaurant this week. The same woman who followed and shouted at a high school student who just survived a mass shooting is very upset, she told Sean Hannity, that someone ruined her perfectly good blooming onion. Well, last night I was having dinner with two members of my staff, and we were working, preparing for committee hearings today. Um, and then we were approached, some, a woman came over to my table and started verbally attacking me, calling me all kinds of names. You dumb, stupid, ridiculous, hot dog face! And then another member of her party started screaming, F you, Marjorie, F you, as Marjorie. loud as he possibly could, over and over and over again, inside this restaurant. F you! F you, Marjorie! F you! <laughs> Um, we want our own safe space, and we deserve it. You can't feel safe at the Waffle House. I don't know where you can. Now, now there are four safe spaces. Okay, because I feel like they were against that, right? Well, I know a safe space. Might I suggest the bottom of the well that girl from the ring climbed out of? <laughs> And then we have Laura Ingram, who interviewed a parent from some town in Maine who was upset about books his sons found at the school library. One uh, of the sons is in high school, one's in elementary. The book the kid at the high school got was definitely inappropriate for teenagers. I looked it up. But for whatever reason, the guy brought his nine-year-old on TV with him to talk about it. And watch this kid closely, because he's good. So that book was genderqueer. Um, my son actually checked that out of the high school library and brought it home and I looked through it. There was graphic content of two boys and uh, one of them was sucking him okay. off. Okay, all right, yeah, and all right, yeah. we get it. <laughs> Come on now, it's maybe a spoiler alert. Let's have another look at that kid. Sucking uh, him okay. off. Right, yeah. and... <laughs> well, at least he's learning something. <laughs> on Sunday, uh, March 12th, I'm hosting the Oscars live here on NBC. <laughs> uh, well, that's very kind. And... There are some major motion pictures in the running this year. There are 10 Best Picture nominees. How many of them have you seen, Guillermo? Uh, one, Jimmy. Only one? Yeah, only one. You've not seen it? Oh, really? And I'm guessing it's Top Gun, right? No, it's Avatar. Oh, you didn't see Top Gun? No, I haven't seen Top Gun. When Tom Cruise was here last week, you told him you saw Top Gun, didn't you? <laughs> no, I, I didn't tell him anything. <laughs> I you didn't? Did no, I didn't tell him anything. Oh, all I right. I just took a picture with him and that's it. Do you think he is... <laughs> He assumed he saw Top Gun? Yeah, of course. Oh, of course, yeah. <laughs> Why didn't you go see Top Gun? I don't know, Jimmy. You know, I, okay. You know, but I oh, saw okay. Avatar. Of the 10 Best Picture nominees, do you know which one made the most money? Avatar, Jimmy. That's right, Avatar. Y yeah. Yes, uh, Avatar, The Way of Water, grossed $2.3 billion. It's the third highest grossing movie of all time. And, you know, uh, box office matters for sure, but you don't have a hit movie until Yaya says you do. Our very own in-house Rotten Tomato Yaya has yet to weigh in until now, and now it's Yaya talking about the movie Avatar, The Way of Water. Hi, it's me, Yaya. I talk about the movie nominated for Oscar, Avatar. I saw the old Avatar, that the new one, play now. Avatar, like the people living in the farm, no clothes, 
Only underwear. The lady, she's in the movie Avatar, Rosie Samantha. She's in the movie also Marble Movie. She's green woman. Why that bitch with the lady in that movie? She's the man lady in the alien. Her name, Serena Werva. Yeah. And also she did the, the movie, Friend with the Monkey. And the, 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 the man guy in that movie, Avatar, Sam Willis Smith. I got a picture with James Cameron. He's the director. He do Terminator. He do Titanic. And he do movie with Arnold. He dressed like 007. He hold the gun like James Bond. And James Cameron, big director, with Mark Corsese. I got uh, Franz Bolt Kobala, the Godfather, Star Trek. I got a picture with him. Steven Spielberg, too. In that movie, Avatar, is technology. Is he have a special suit like this? James Cameron, you put you in the computer and you come av Avatar. Wow, look, it's beautiful. Look, I'm swimming now. I'm shooting an arrow. You one of us now? Now I'm Avatar. What's the Avatar? The 3D with the glasses is boom, come in your face. <laughs> I love you, I love you, I love you. I love you, you too, yeah, yeah. I love I you, you, I love you too. All right, yeah, there we go. And God bless you. God bless you, God bless you forever. And God bless you. And God bless you. And God bless you. No, God bless you. Well, God bless no, you. No, God bless you. Today, God can bless you. Tomorrow, God bless you. God me. bless you. We bless your audio. And the audience, too. Yeah. Yeah. God bless you. God bless you, too. God, God bless you. I took picture before Oscar. You did. Would you? Yeah. Can I do take picture? Oh, God bless you. No, yes, God bless of you. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're taking. Oh, you want to take a picture uh, yeah, now? Yeah, you and me. Oh, okay. All I right. Just can't wait till after the show. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> I love you, Jimmy. I love you too. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Wish me now. Okay, put you up. All right. God bless you. All right. There we go. Take him away, Guillermo. <laughs> <laughs>